So this is what I ended up doing with the gladiolus that broke out front from the storm. Uh, we had a big storm come in with tons of hail and gladiolus flowers are really tall. It knocked it over, broke the stem. So I brought it in and put it in this vase here. I had this vase in my living room for decoration and it ended up being the perfect height and perfect width for this guy. So a couple more flowers have opened up. Really gorgeous red. has some more that are starting to open and then I don't know if all of those are going to open up um I hope they do but some of them look I don't know they're really really tightly closed so I don't know if they'll open up or not we'll see yeah it looks absolutely gorgeous love it so in the garden today I had to do something that I really didn't want to do. I had a fasciated or faciated tomato. It had a stem. It was one of my Berkeley tie-dye pink tomatoes. So this stem, get my shadow out of the way. This stem, if you can see, it's like really flat and ribbon like and everything is all fused together so this is called a fasciated stem um, it's most common in the asteraceae family like the daisies the sunflowers it also happens to like squashes but of course you can see here it happened to the tomato it, uh, it's usually harmless from what I've seen and what I've read but on this plant so the top right here, this was just a tomato. Just like this little stem right here, it was just a tomato right there. And we couldn't find the main growth point. Like it had no <laughs> growth point. And we had trimmed all of the suckers. You can see like these little areas where we took off all of the suckers. So this plant just had no nowhere to grow like no stems to grow from so yeah I pulled this up and it was really hard it's always hard to pull up plants when you garden I even have a hard time like thinning out my seedlings and I always try to keep them all because I feel bad for them but the poor little Berkeley tie-dye pink that's okay. We have two or three of each tomato in the garden, so I'll have a couple more of these guys. But in its place, so in my other video, when I did a garden update, I found out that we had a ground cherry seedling. And I didn't have any space for it because none of my ground cherry seeds came up. I didn't think we were gonna get any. I went ahead and planted the garden, filled everything up. We had no space. And then these guys came up and I have a couple more down here. These are more ground cherries. They all came up and I'm like, oh no, I have no room. I don't know where I'm gonna put these guys. So uh, something good came from taking out the Berkeley tie-dye pink tomato. Now we'll have a place for these guys, and we'll have some ground cherries this year. I'm really excited about that. But yeah, when one door closes, another one opens, I guess, right? But yeah, I had to get this on camera before it dies. Um, it's been in my house for a day or two now, and it's doing great. Absolutely gorgeous. But I'll do another update when I put these guys in the ground. I'm going to wait until they're a little bit bigger. I'm afraid if I put them out there now, then the bugs will just devour them because they're so tiny and fragile. I'm going to keep an eye on them up here on the porch. And when I put these guys in the ground, I'll do a video and a little garden update. 